If I have ever seen magic, it has been in Africa, John Hemingway once said, and he was right. This year I decided to follow up on one of my earliest childhood dreams, which was becoming a field guide, and so I signed up for the 55 days eco training field guide course, basically the entry level course to become a safari guide. Two months living in a tent in untamed nature, surrounded by dangerous game in camps with no fences, learning from some of the best instructors in the industry. Can you see this is an old Everybody happy with an old phone? To be honest, it didn't come as a big surprise to me, but these two months would change my life. <laughs> There is something about safari life that makes you forget all your sorrows and feel as if you had drunk half a bottle of champagne, bubbling over with heartfelt gratitude for being alive, Karen Blixen once said, and she was right too. My name is Matt, and in this video I am going to give you a glimpse into what I experienced during my 55 days field guide course in South Africa, what I learned from it and how it changed me. If you like nature, wildlife and adventure, this video is for you. The 55 days course is the foundation for a career in the field guide industry, but many people choose to do it just to experience nature in a much deeper and more meaningful way. It is almost like going on a safari for two months with the goal of learning as much as possible about the environment. Once qualified, you can conduct professional 4x4 game drives while explaining a variety of aspects about the natural environment in wilderness areas to your guests. The days during these two months were packed with programs, but seriously, nothing but cool stuff. Besides practicing your skills relevant to vehicle-based 4x4 game driving, you are diving into 17 different modules relevant to the biomes and ecosystems in South Africa. Namely, guiding, geology, basic ecology, weather and climate, biomes, botany and grasses, animal behavior, tracks, mammals, birds, arthropods, reptiles, astronomy, amphibians, basic taxonomy, fish and conservation management. You wouldn't believe the amount of knowledge you gain during this course. And yet, it happens in such a practical and playful way it seems almost seamless. Every day you go out on both, a bushwalk and a game drive, during sunrise and sunset. Your instructors show you whatever they find, concentrating on the topics you have to learn for the exams. In between these activities, there are lectures about the different modules and time for self-study. For those choosing to do this course as a possible career choice, there are written exams about every topic. I didn't love the written exams, but it is what makes you study all that interesting stuff you need to know as a field guide. I did however love the field tests, where you would walk in the bush with your instructors and they would ask you questions about the things you would encounter right there during that walk. Like, what bird was that calling? Which animal made this trek? In which direction was it going? Whose droppings are these? What kind of tree is this? And what is its medicinal use? Soon enough, participants have to take over and start to actually conduct the game drives themselves, including the organization and hosting of coffee breaks and sundowners. Of course, you always have an instructor with you, giving you tips on how to improve your guiding and dropping knowledge on you. Infrastructure and life in camp is pretty simple. You have everything you need. Showers, toilets, a lecture hall and a communal area for meals. The only thing you have to worry about with meals is not to eat too much. Because the meals cooked by the kitchen staff are freaking delicious. As guest hosting is part of what a field guide does, there is always a rotating duty team responsible for presenting and hosting the meals. Vegetarians, lentils, minced meat and some chicken. The tents are simple and the camps are unfenced. Anything can come through at any time. Having to piss at night takes on a whole new level of adventure. Depending on the camp, there are different possibilities to make use of your free time. Selati, for example, had a volleyball court in the middle of the riverbed. So we actually played volleyball where elephants and lions roamed freely. Living in paradise, it was not too hard to find a nice spot just to chill, read or take a swim when water levels permitted it. The evenings would always end around the fireplace the best way to end the day. 
the crackling of the fire, a drink, the sound of lions roaring and hyenas calling, and sometimes what happens when a bunch of like-minded people get together, these evenings would turn into a little party. Looks like you're fighting. One of my absolute highlights during this course were the sleep out wilderness experiences. We would pack our sleeping bags and mattresses and find a beautiful spot somewhere out in the wilderness. We would make a big fire and just have a fantastic time out in the bush. Don't even get me started on how amazing the stars were at night. No footage in the world would come close to give it justice. And also, I don't have any, because I was just enjoying the moment. During night, we would take guarding shifts in teams of two. After all, we were in the wild, under the open sky, with no tent or fence protecting us. And every now and then, we would have some visitors. What an amazing experience, easily one of my favorites. Being exposed to raw nature and wildlife puts you back into perspective. We are just a tiny part of nature, living among other creatures. I wish this field guide course was mandatory by law for every person living on this beautiful planet. This world would be a much better place if we all started to treat nature with respect. We are just guests on this planet and there is literally nothing you can take with you when you bite the dust. And we all will. That was amazing. One of the things you learn during this course is that no animal actually wants to harm you. The more you learn about the different animals and their behavior, the more you start to admire them. For me, this was especially the case with elephants. I developed a deep passion for these gentle giants that I used to fear as a kid. Spend as much time with elephants as you can was a piece of advice from one of our instructors and he knew what he was talking about. There is this peaceful feeling you get when you are in the presence of elephants. It's hard to describe. It's like time stops when you hear that deep rumbling sound emitted by elephants and you feel pure happiness. You feel home. The most important lesson I took with me is everything is connected in nature in the most beautiful way you can imagine. For example, the predominant rocks of an area are broken down through weathering and erosion to form soils, which in interaction with climate distinguish the plant species growing in a specific area, forming the habitat suitable for certain animals. Know the landscape of an area, and you will know where to find which plants and animals. Know the calls of birds and the behavior of mammals, and they will warn you of danger or help you to find water. Everything plays its role in nature. Every species has its own personal niche and fulfills its purpose in the bigger ecosystem. Take out one thing and something else starts to get out of balance. But even abiotic components like fire play a vital role in these ecosystems. Controlled burns are used as part of conservation and habitat management. We were lucky enough to take part in a controlled burn, even if it looks like it was kinda out of control. By the way, your relationship to animal dung will change dramatically during this course. Poop is not just a waste product. It's an essential part in the ecosystem and such an important component in tracking and finding animals. Inspecting and touching dung becomes normal, up to a point where you start impala poop spitting as a game during sundowner. Africa changes you forever, like nowhere on earth. Once you have been there, you will never be the same, Ryan Jackman once said, and he was right too. It was tough when the course came to an end. I have met so many cool people, got accustomed to life in the bush and collected unforgettable memories. I had the time of my life. But this was not the end. It was the beginning of something new. <laughs> Most of us stayed for a few extra days after the course, exploring the province of Mpumalanga on our own. After all, we were now certified level 1 field guides. What did you want to become when you were a child? I decided to dig up my dream again, and it changed my life. Explaining nature, the importance of habitat conservation and how everything is linked together, also with us humans, might just be one of the most important things to do right now, at least in my opinion. 
That's why I will leave my job behind for now and start with the one-year professional field guide course at the beginning of next year. If you want to join me on this adventure, subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you in my next video and stay awesome! Yellow bill. Yeah.